Minister on what exactly has been going on in the last few hours. Authorities have confirmed they've detained 11 people in connection with this attack. Four of those are reported to have been uh, the attackers inside uh, Crocus City Hall. There was a total uh, report, say, of five attackers. That potentially leaves one more uh, unaccounted for. But we understand that four have been taken in for questioning. They were stopped in a car uh, on the western border uh, of Russia in the Bryansk region, which borders Ukraine. And in the last few minutes, uh, security forces, uh, media reports in Russia citing security forces have said they intended to cross the Russian border uh, into Ukraine and they allegedly had ties to Ukrainian intelligence. That's coming from Russian media reports, as I say, citing uh, the secret services. Now, a lot of reports circulated in the aftermath of this attack saying that um, uh, ISIS, uh, or branch of ISIS rather, had claimed responsibility for this attack. Um, the Russian media were very quick to downplay those claims, but they appear uh, to have been backed up by Western officials at this point. Um, so it remains to be seen exactly what the motives of these attackers were, if they were affiliated indeed with this uh, terrorist organization, and of course, um, what nationality they are as well, what the passports they held, because initially media reports say they found uh, Tajik passports in the car. Uh, Tajik officials, the, the Tajik embassy was very quick to um, deny that. They said we received no official requests from Russian authorities. Let's stick to official information. So obviously, as that investigation carries on, um, it's very important to sift through uh, potentially uh, unreliable information that's coming through and what is coming through from uh, the official authorities. Yeah, a grieving uh, candle and the, the date of yesterday's attack. Um, medics, uh, hospitals have said hundreds of people have turned up this morning to donate blood. Uh, for the victims um, of this uh, attack, though they say there is enough blood uh, to go around, but people still keep coming and coming. Um, there's a real sense of uh, of grief, as I say, in the city this morning. The Moscow mayor, Sergei Sabanin, has cancelled public gatherings, has cancelled sports events. The Russian national football team has cancelled their friendly match with Paraguay. Um, there's an increased security presence um, on the streets. Um, that was particularly strong yesterday on the roads as well. I was stopped by road police as I made my way home for extra checks. Um, there's increased security presence at transport hubs because of the risk in these sorts of cases of potential copycat follow-up attacks. So very much a uh, heavy mood in Moscow this morning uh, and an increased security presence uh, to reassure people. It's in the Bataclan, uh, as you rightly say, the witnesses have been giving some really harrowing testimony of what happened there um, in, in this attack. Um, these shooters went in uh, intent to kill as many people as possible. They were using automatic weapons. They set the theatre uh, on fire. Uh, people reported breaking windows to try to get out. They reported running around the theatre, hiding wherever they could in changing rooms, in toilets, in baby changing rooms. Um, tragically, many people, according to authorities, actually died from smoke inhalation when the fire spread as they tried to hide um, from these killers. People said they were trying to smash windows, um, trying to escape to the subway. Um, these people were being shot at point blank range and cold blood in, in entire groups with automatic weapons. Um, the phone signal was very poor in Moscow yesterday. The Wi-Fi signal was very poor. So people couldn't contact loved ones. People couldn't understand what was going on. They didn't know if their families and friends were alive or not. Um, this was very much a shocking event uh, for Moscow and for Russia uh, as well. And no doubt we'll be hearing more um, of those very um, harrowing testimonies. And the investigation continues. Yeah, and there are certainly going to be some most high-profile attacks. The Beslan school the, uh, siege, the Nordos theater siege, um, the jet being brought down over the Sinai, the bombings in, in uh, the Moscow, the St. Petersburg metro. Um, th those mainly, though, were nigh on 20 years ago. In recent times, um, Russia has pretty successfully tackled um, its terrorism problem, despite, of course, its involvement in Syria and its fight against terrorist groups there. Um, so this is an unusual, unusually violent terrorist attack for Russia. Um, having said that, though, in the lead up to this attack, uh, to this particular attack. There were several incidents um, reported in March. Security services um, uh, say they liquidated half a dozen ISIS-affiliated terrorists in the Caucasus in early March. They say they prevented an attack um, on a synagogue. Um, they say they detained a uh, terrorist commander. These were all events in the lead-up to this attack. And as you say, authorities in Russia, Moscow authorities, officials, um, have pointed to those warnings by um, Western embassies, the US embassy, UK embassy, for people to avoid large public gatherings. And they've questioned as to um, why these embassies allegedly did not share that information. Now, Western officials have said we did share that information, and media reports have since said here in Russia that in Indeed, some information was shared. It just was not specific. So there's a lot of uncertainty about exactly what was shared, to what extent that was shared, how many details they were, and how, as you say, this was allowed to happen at a time when the country is embroiled in conflict, at a time when um, security is on a high level. There's a lot of security everywhere. Um, how exactly this could have happened, and uh, no doubt more information will come out uh, in the coming hours and days about that. Daniel, thank you very much. Daniel Hawk.